Welcome to the only podcast on the planet dedicated to exploring the art, science, and lifestyle of wholesalers and their leaders. This is the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. I'm your host, the founder of Wholesaler Masterminds, Rob Shore. Wholesalers, welcome back to the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. Wholesalers, Wholesaler Masterminds Speakers Bureau has an amazing assortment of speakers. If you're looking to do a road show, if you're looking to do a complex event, if you're looking to do a divisional meeting, a sales conference, whatever your need is for an outside expert beyond the scope of your company, Wholesaler Mastermind Speakers Bureau, I'm certain has someone to fit. And in addition to that, there's a number of programs at Wholesaler Mastermind Speakers Bureau that are going to extend the value that you get from many of your speakers by providing lots of additional opportunities to have your advisors in front of them. For more information about Wholesale the Mastermind Speakers Bureau, go to WMMSpeakers, WMMSpeakers.com, or just head to the homepage of WholesalerMasterminds.com, scroll down a little bit, and you'll see Wholesale Masterminds Speakers Bureau. Wholesalers, let's talk about service models today. You know, when I coach wholesalers, we make sure that we talk about service models because you have to segment your book of business. You have to be able to understand who you're giving what velocity of love to in your advisor community. And you know it's no different for financial advisors. You know that serving clients thoroughly and appropriately while focusing on growing business activities is a constant challenge for financial advisors. I mean, the I haven't heard from you in a while are dreaded words that simply no advisor wants to hear. Yet with so much to do, how can advisors hope to monitor every client as though they were their only client? Well, now as wholesalers, you can help them overcome some of those challenges. Our guest today is a sought after expert on helping advisors be distraction proof and complete what matters most. See, he's been a financial advisor himself since 2001. And he knows firsthand what advisors face with juggling a myriad of activities. Wholesalers have unique opportunities to provide guidance to advisors, to provide them help and assistance. One of the biggest challenges to advisors is providing constant service to their clients. And when you as the wholesaler can equip the advisor with tools to more effectively look after clients and grow their business, they'll gain even more credibility, you as the wholesaler will gain more credibility with the advisor. You'll deepen the relationship and you'll raise the chances of having your future calls returned. Paul Kingsman is our guest and he knows the importance of keeping focused. See, he trained for 13 years to swim a two minute backstroke race at the Olympics and he won a medal by only four one hundredths of a second. He knows what works in the real world and knows how to excel in a highly competitive environment. He wants to provide you with practical, actionable ideas to help enable you to help your advisors gain control over their clients to work smarter and succeed sooner. Paul Kingsman, welcome to the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. Thank you, Rob. It's a pleasure being here. It's it's, it's great to have you back. Wholesalers, uh, Paul is a return guest. If you want to hear our first talk where we go into more detail about his exploits as an Olympic swimmer and how distraction proof led him to the great successes he saw in the pool. Please do go back into our archives and check out that original show today. We want to pick Paul's brain clean about service models. (laughs) So uh, Paul, what's the importance of service models? We stated in the introduction, but Mm. you've been in practice you, you worked uh, as an RIA, in an RIA firm. T- mm. Tell us more about how you were able to bring service models to life in your practices. And then we'll talk a little bit about what you do to coach advisors, because that's part of your practice today. You coach advisors. Mm-hmm. Just give us, give us some more context around service models and the importance therein. Sure. Thanks, Rob. And and you mentioned a term which was just right on, which was velocity of love. And (laughs) I haven't heard that before, and I love that term. Um, And you're absolutely right as far as, um, from the advisor's perspective, um, showing the clients um, the the love that they they have for them. 
um, advisors often, when you start mentioning about service models and um, delivering more service to one group over another, they're, they throw up their arms sometimes and think, well, you know, that's not fair. I should be treating everybody the same. And while you should have everybody's interests at heart to the same extent, you simply can't have them at heart to the same amount of time. And so a lot of advisors will struggle out of the gate if they don't prioritize um, servicing and touching and connecting with their their top group of clients um, more than their other groups. Uh, it's not to say they love the, the C clients or D clients any less, um, but usually the A clients are bringing a little more complexity and it's the A clients who they want, they want more of them. And so they need to be more discerning uh, with their time. Um, and so, and a, an effort and energy. Um, and so oftentimes when I bump into advisors, they'll talk about this They'll have a picture of it in their heads, but as you and all the wholesalers listening know, it's one thing to be thinking about it, it's another thing to actually have a structure in place and be following it. Well, what's the biggest What's the biggest hurdle? The reason I ask that is, mm. when, when you just said this whole notion of it's one thing to have this idea in your mind of something I should implement, and it's a whole different idea to implement it. I think about my wholesaling clients and I think about, you know, there, there's this chasm between, gee, you know, I really should set up a service model and actually setting up a service model. Mm. So I guess the first place to start to pick around this for me, which would be so helpful to learn from you is how do I start to make some decisions about segmentation? How do I start to make some decisions about where the lines in the sand should start to be drawn as I look at my client base, whether I'm a wholesaler or whether I'm an advisor? Yeah, it's a, it's a great point, and, and, and you're right with the lines in the sand. Um, it's very similar to winning an Olympic medal. A lot of people talk about it, but very few will actually commit it to writing, to black and white, where all of a sudden it starts to become a, a real thing. And initially, exactly what you mentioned is, is a part of an issue that creates um, a distraction and has them being apprehensive. People are wanting to see something perfect out of the gate. And so they'll procrastinate at the thought of, hey, what if it's not looking right to start with instead of realizing that this is a work in progress. Um, these are lines in the sand that can be shifted around until I get it to exactly how I want it looking. But they won't give themselves the option to even get there and it, because they won't put down an initial lump of clay, so to speak. So I think for a lot of people, you know, a lot of advisors will push back and say, hey, should it be AUM or should it be revenue generated um, by the amount of fees? And, and I say just start with the AUM, start with the assets under management and break it up into into three to four groups. Your top 25%, your middle 50%, and your bottom 25%. And just start there and see what that looks like. And so call your top 25% your A's and your middle 50% your B's and your bottom your bottom 25% your C clients. Um, now we start to look at what we wanted to, to deliver to those clients. Um, and so if it's your A clients, for instance, is it um, realistic to to touch all of them quarterly? And so if you've got 50 A clients, you're immediately talking about 20 touches, um, 20 portfolio reviews, um, you know, doing doing that particular number every every quarter and then rolling through that book of business. Um, but then you can start playing around with the numbers and with the amount of service you can realistically provide. You know, one of the things that you mentioned I think is important and it just it's just knocking around my head so I have to verbalize it or otherwise it'll continue to bang against my skull, which is the whole notion of perfect is the enemy of done. Yeah. You, know, you know, wholesalers, perfect is the enemy of done. If you've never heard that before, I'm not saying that you need to be sloppy. I'm not saying that you need to be haphazard. But if you're trying to wait until that absolutely perfect moment, whatever the perfect moment is, the perfect presentation, the perfect email, the perfect client service model, you need to get over that and move on to, you gotta get something done, again, not unprofessional or haphazard, you gotta get something done because waiting for perfect, well, it just may never happen. Mm. Paul, let's, yeah. let's talk about this client service model matrix that you have. So yes. you, you, you have developed this uh, matrix. Tell us about it, tell us the origin of it, tell us what's on it. I mean, there's some things on here as I look at it that uh, are activities that I'm not a financial advisor, 
I didn't even consider would be on, on the radar as far as things that I'd be offering my client base. But tell us mm-hmm. about, tell us where it came from. Tell us more. Sure, and, and you're right with um, a lot of things that we actually wouldn't um, offer every single review. Um, we put these down definitely to serve at a minimum as reminders to us. So, for instance, you know, reviewing somebody, uh, reviewing a client's long-term care insurance or a state plan, um, that's something that's just not going to happen every quarter, if every year. But it's something that you want to have on paper so you can be reminded of the fact, yes, it's been two years since we reviewed the long-term care situation, and it may be as simple as, has anything dramatic changed that we need to be aware of in adjusting that? And you and you won't bring those things to mind unless you have them, you know, you have them written down. So it's it's a simple checklist, and it's saying, okay, for our A clients, at a, and we're going to offer to see them every quarter to start with. And this is another reason why advisors want to be running through the same routine at every portfolio review, because ideally what you want to have your A clients getting so used to is your routine where they say, hey, is there any need for me to come to the office in three months' time? How about we do it over the phone? Or can we even do it in six months' time? Which is now music to any advisor's ears because they've been consistent with the reviews, they haven't tried to trick it up, and now they've added capacity to their to their calendar. So you have your port, you know, your primary portfolio review. You have your, you know, where are they at with the mortgage situation? Where are they at with their cash flow situation? Do I have their four hundred one k details, um, social security analysis? That, frankly, for most people, is not that relevant until they are hitting late fifties, early sixties, or considering retirement at early sixties. Uh, what does that look like? And so, even if the advisor just raises the question or says to the client, this is something we're going to look at maybe in two to three years' time. It's not crucial right now. That client immediately knows it's on the advisor's radar. I can forget it. And but, again, they're not going to bug the advisor for for those details later on. When we talk about the model, since we are audio only here, I want to try to give our wholesalers a little bit of a word's eye view of what this looks like uh, in the mm. words in the words of the beloved Chick Hearn, the uh, the word's eye view. Yeah. Um, uh, so we we've got these these um, big categories in terms of activities. So there's the activity of portfolio review meetings and or calls. Mm-hmm. We've got the big activities of financial planning services, i.e. mortgage evaluation, social security analysis, estate planning review, health insurance review, etc. We've got the big topic of tax and estate planning, and that could be collaborative calling with CPAs, tax return review, etc. We've got monthly and quarterly touches, and then we've got special events, special mm-hmm. events being lunch, dinner, movie tickets, etc. And then wholesalers, what we have is some directives about each one of those activities based upon frequency, and then frequency is aligned with the caliber of the client, be they A, B, C, D. Did I get that right, Paul? That's that's exactly right, and and you're totally right. It's particularly on the let, let's look at the special events, for instance. Um, you got your A's, B's, and and that's yeses to to all those categories. But you might have uh, a C client who has a child, 24 years old, working at Google. Not a lot of assets right now, um, but while the parents who you have as clients are a C client, that son or daughter, you, you may see them as a potential A client down the track. And so all of a sudden, not only do you now, you're not now talking with C clients, in your mind, you now have a potential A client out of the children of those C clients. So now you can start to get those children, the advisor can get those you know, children and potential new A clients on their radar as well. Um, and so you can program in um, situations like reviews. You're a better calendaring now it, it, ahead of time to say, okay, where's my capacity at? We're going to have X amount of A portfolio reviews this quarter, X amount of B portfolio reviews. Um, it's going to immediately show the advisor, hey, am I at capacity? Do I need to bring on a junior advisor? Am I actually touching people as often as I say I am? And that's a big one because when you tell people who are coming on board with you, um, you don't tell them, hey, you're a B client. What you will express to them is, you know, you can expect to hear from us two to three times a year. 
Are you okay with that, Mr. and Mrs. Client? Hey, that's wonderful. Well, you haven't told them they're a B client, but they're going to, you know, you're going to reach out to them once every four months. Um, and like I said, if they're an A client who just wants to hear from you twice a year, you automatically now have grown your capacity and you're tracking it and nothing's going to fall between the cracks. Let's talk a little bit about what you just spoke of, and that's this notion of uh, advisors not explicitly telling a client that they're A, B, or C, mm-hmm. but but getting kind of uh, uh, agreement that their plan, based upon what they know to be their service model, is agreeable to the client. When I coach wholesalers and we do service model uh, development, we outline kind of the uh, full assortment of perks that are available from dealing with the wholesaler, that is the advisor's assortment of perks that are available from dealing with the wholesaler. And then we make some decisions about what strata of advisor client is uh, available to get what uh, level of uh, assistance. So as an example, uh, the A client has a uh, marketing opportunity to do a seminar of up to uh, 500 people catered. Uh, and that, mm. that has an implicit value on it, right? Yes. Um, so one of the questions that I always get is, Rob, do I make my service model known to the advisor? You know, should I tell my advisor that I have stratas of service and that in order for me, it's analogous to being gold or platinum at Marriott. It's analogous mm. to being 1K or executive platinum. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same thing. Should I publicize, if I'm an advisor, would I ever publicize the quote-unquote perks available within my service model? Uh, no, because you want to be presenting them uh, in a way to make the client, um, in this case from the wholesaler to the advisor, in a way to make the advisor still sound, still feel special even if they're a C client. Um, so, for instance, relative to where that particular client's at, um, you know, we, we would be saying um, something toward the effect of we are putting on, we, we have, you know, a movie preview that we're, we're inviting a certain amount of, uh, of clients to, and uh, we just wanted to make these two tickets available to you and see if you're interested and see if that date is, is free. Um, now, that may be a smaller, less expensive event, but we still want them feeling great. Um, whether they're a D client, where some a lot of advisors will go from A to D clients, we still want that D client feeling feeling like they're our one and only client. Um, so there's verbiage to use with that. So um, so no, we we won't make it you know specifically that clear to them. However, if they're a C client expecting A client treatment, um, that gets a little trickier. But again, we want to be clear with them, um, clarifying that you know. Typically, with the complexity or lack of it relative to the circumstances that, that you have, um, we're very comfortable and know we can meet and exceed your expectations through just meeting every you know five or six months or so. Um, if you're concerned about that, shoot us an email and we can set up a time to talk. So it still leaves the ball in their court, but you've also clarified for them yeah, the, 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 the situation isn't that complex. See where they go with it from there, and it's it's a case by case situation. Um, but no, we won't we won't bring this out of the gate, um, so to speak, and present it like that. I want to I want to poke around on that a little bit because mm. um, uh, as I listen to your further explanation, it occurs to me, and maybe we need to, I need to reframe some of the nomenclature that I use around service models because. Just in the same way that airlines or hotels or, or you know wineries have uh, levels of membership, and you know going in, in order to get the full velocity of everything that I have, I need to bring X. I mean, as an example, I, I recently moved some money to uh, TD Ameritrade, mm-hmm. and I knew with certainty that if I added X amount of money to my portfolio, there was this coming to me by way of consulting, opportunity, personal service, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And it actually motivated me to move some additional money that I didn't really think I was going to move. Right. So there is, would you, would you agree or can we chat about the notion that there's this uh, promotion of your practice in advance which says we have a full range of things available to our clients and depending on how you choose to commit assets to us, we choose to offer these services to you. But then there's this other dimension of client service 
where they never see the matrix. They, ne- they Things just happen to them that they're delighted with, but more things happen to the A clients and happen to the D clients. Did I articulate that correctly? <laughs> You did, and that's a great point. Um, we would use that, uh, we would keep that in mind. So let's say we have an A client um, or a B client coming over, and they've indicated, hey, there's, a, there's, a, there's another IRA rollover out there, or there's a 401k, and I'm about to retire next year. Um, we would couch things from the perspective of, you know, if we're, if we're going to be adding those kind of assets, what that's going to permit us to do, and it's purely more a time and effort situation on our on our uh, front, is uh, provide a financial plan uh, for you at no cost. We we absorb the costs, you know, when we're really talking about that particular level of assets coming in, and mm-hmm. um, we're happy to do that for clients that that have. Um, that particular amount of assets with us, and a number of them do. Um, so, should you decide to bring those assets over to us, um, you know, we, we'd revisit the the fee around the financial plan. So that would be one way that we've couched it to say, hey, you got those assets out there. We want them here. Um, it, it's you know, it's beneficial for you to to bring them over. Um, this is what we provide the clients with who have those uh, th- those type of assets and above. Because it's an enticement. It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an extra reason for me to give you more of what I have, whether it's an advisor giving more to the wholesaler or whether it's the client showing more assets to the advisor. I've, I've done that for lots of reasons, not the least of which is I get something reciprocally back. Exactly. And you can couch it in a way of saying, hey, at that stage, you know, you're, you're really showing us you're serious about, about this relationship and wanting to bring everything to us. And we, we totally, we fully appreciate that. And for people who do that um, and, and really want to work seriously with everything they've got with us, um, these are just, you know, some of the extra ways that uh, some of the extra things that we can provide for them. Uh, so it's couched from a relationship and deepening it. How deep do you want to bring this relationship? Paul, I want to thank you for your time today. Wholesalers, uh, if you need additional information about creating service models, being able to look at the client service model matrix uh, for uh, getting equipped to help advisors put their service models in place, Paul is ready, willing, and able to assist you with that. Paul, can I thank you once again for being on our show? Mm, it's been a pleasure, Rob. I really enjoyed uh, speaking with your group and speaking with you. Thank you, Paul. Wholesalers, come back next time for another episode of the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. You'll find all of our content at wholesalermasterminds.com, and the podcast can be found at iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. Stitcher.